for joining us now. Here we go. Hello, Lisa. Hey, lovely to chat to you, Jamie. How you doing? Pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, I've got Lachlan doing the school drop, so oh. I'm all all oh. with you. No, oh. no troubles at all this morning. Oh no, <laughs> I was hoping I was hoping to get him in there for a couple of minutes tonight. What oh legend. well, he, they haven't left yet. They're having a uh, post downstairs, so we, ah, okay. uh, hopefully he'll jump on and he'll realise that he needs to come up. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Yeah, because I mean tonight, I mean you know, look. You're an elite athlete, super performer. We all know that. But tonight, really, I wanted to talk to, about, talk to you about being a mum. How do you create a good work life balance with, with running? I mean, you know, you're doing how many kilometers per week, you know, in, in an off and an on block? What, what are you doing at the moment? Yeah, so I'm running 120, 130 at the moment in an off yeah. block. Uh, yeah. Just trying to take it, take my time and yeah, on block with the marathon you know one close to 180 pretty yeah. crazy stuff <laughs> exactly and and you know for people people like us and me in the, in the normal world that's that's you know hard enough in itself you know the fact that you're also a mum and an associate partner at IBM managing 200 consultants is it the consultants uh they make my job easy though jamie they're they're amazing (laughs) yeah 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 they better be they better be let you uh let you go down to the track yeah yeah perfect well look that's really what i wanted to sort of talk about really tonight is just you know how do you do that because i'm sure we've got i know i've spoken to lots of our sort of rundaway customers and you know they're they're struggling to get out to go and do even a 10k race you know so it's and, and to you know, this is inspirational stuff. So that's what I wanted to touch on. But I did want to give a little bit of background as to you and your achievements, really. So bronze and silver medalist at Commonwealth Games. So you tell me if I get any of this wrong, but bronze and silver medalist <laughs> at Commonwealth Games. Um, just broke your PB 224 at the Berlin Marathon, same race as I did. Uh, just gone. Third Australian marathon runner of all time. That's right. Yep. For 16th, now, anyway, you know. Sixteenth <laughs> at the Olympics in London. Not, not bad. And then also trying to beat it in Paris. Is that right? That's right. Yeah, it's been an adventure, and there's been lots of ups and downs, which I'm sure everyone can relate to. Uh, so Rio, I got a sinus infection in the team camp and struggled my way through that to finish that one. And uh, you know, Tokyo was it was rather challenging, leaving Pete for nine and a half weeks uh, in total. So my mental health was struggling a little bit by the time I hit race day in Tokyo. Yeah. So all these things that, you know, we all, us humans all go through, um, elite athletes yeah. go through them as well. And uh, yeah. yeah, so I really would love that opportunity as will many of the Australian girls uh, to have that run in Paris, but hopefully finish on a fairy tale. Oh, that'd be awesome. I, well, I'm, I would love to come over and watch you run that. That would be brilliant. Yeah. That would be amazing. <laughs> that would be cool. So, um, the lead up to Paris then, um, what's the, so just briefly talk us through what are you doing? What's the plan? How, how do you, how do you sort of segment it in your mind? You know, that's a very different, um, sort of goal. I've got my goals, but it's always nice to hear from, from an elite athlete perspective as to how you, how you chunk it up, I guess. Yeah. So I guess if I backtrack to how I started running to answer that question and yeah. I remember standing with my coach, Dick Tilford, uh, and watching one of his athletes, Lisa Ondiki, who won a silver medal uh, at the Olympics back in the eighties. And uh, I remember watching uh, her at one of her track races with Dick and my dad. And I was like, wow, I wish one day, you know, as a teenager, I said, I wish I one day I could run as fast as Lisa. Yeah. Uh, and that was kind of how, uh, my running and my passion for marathoning particularly came about and yeah uh, I yeah I run with my dad when I was younger and and that you know you you kind of set yourself goal like we all do and and that was something I really hoped that I could do one day uh, yeah. hence why I'm now still trying to run this uh, PV and I was so close in Berlin I think I needed to run about nine seconds faster and yeah. I would have been uh, with least a second all-time Australian so um, that's the fire that I've got, I guess, is really yeah. that, um, that PB. Yeah. And um, I, for me, you know, I haven't been able to make a living out of running. It's been very much like uh, like a normal runner. Um, I yeah. see myself more like a normal runner where running is about fitness and finding your best and 
um, and having opportunities to travel the world and, and meet new people and make great friends. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so that's, that's how running's been for me, which has been a positive in, in a sense because it's allowed me to progress my professional career and have that aspect of my life still uh, track along really well. Uh, yeah. And also um, it forces me to have a bit of a um, prioritization throughout my year um, that, and not keep just going, not just keep grinding at marathon training or track training. Yeah. Uh, the way I do it is I sort of set the goal races uh, that I want to do for the year. And then I allow myself a nice recovery period uh, to, you know, to get over that and focus on something different in my life. So um, yeah. then I'll, I'll just change what's, you know, what's the number one, obviously family becomes, is the number one right the way through. Uh, yeah. But if I've got these running goals and I know this specific plan, like a project plan at work uh, for my running piece, then um, when I finish that, I take that opportunity to go, okay, that's running, put that yeah. aside, keep yeah. jogging for enjoyment and, and to keep that base level fitness. But, but I might have a work goal that is um, now elevated um, at that particular period. So um, yeah. that allows me to kind of, you know, bit on the brake, bit on the accelerator and, and to really then uh, keep everything uh, nice and balanced. Yeah. You can be balanced running these crazy kilometers, but uh, it keeps yeah. it more balanced and it doesn't like <laughs> feel like I'm always having to be on because I think that's a hard thing for parents that we want to be the best mom or dad. We want to, you know, be the best at work and give everyone in our teams, you know, the best version of ourselves. And then mm -hmm. we want to be the best, you know, at our um, chosen sport. And you just can't be that way all the time because you'll just burn out. You'll feel frustrated when you can't achieve things because you're doing too many things. Um, and so it's really about giving yourself that permission to take those, you know, those moments yeah. where something is a bit more important than the other and, and, uh, and vice versa. So that's kind of how I try to break up my year and sounds, and, you know, yeah, doesn't always work, but it, um, but it certainly kept things. If I look at like year after year, I've been yeah. in the sport for such a long time. And, yeah. and I think that's why. Yeah, because you've done marathons since 2008, is that right? Yeah, yeah, I was very, yeah, I was lucky to run London as my first one. Um, yeah. So London, is certainly, right. I have a soft spot for, yeah, yeah. for London. Uh, and yeah. I've ran well there every time I've, I've been there. So I, um, yeah, good memories, that's for sure. <laughs> Are you coming back? Are you coming back next year for London? Uh, I think most of the elite races, they get all sorted out uh, after New York City this weekend. Um for who they want to have in their elite fields ah. so hope, yeah so hopefully in a week or two i might have a bit of an idea as to where i can run next so yeah so we're just okay. a couple of weeks away from knowing where i'm Perfect. going <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah and and i i mean you know your schedule must be absolutely jam-packed i can only imagine what your your iCal or your outlook must look like it must just be uh, a plethora of colors just unbelievable <laughs> um but how do you mentally switch off as a, you know, you've got, you've got, you've obviously got Peter, which helps. I find that, you know, when you've got the children that helps, that's part of the switch off. But is that, is that your main focus to help you switch off from work and from running? Cause it's, cause you know, you're in a high performance level in both of those things you're doing all the time. And so do you find that the family part is your switch off? Yeah, I think so. That is very true. I think it's a lot easier with children to do that yeah. because you can go into their world and the things that, you yeah. know, that you're trying to help them with, um, you know, yeah. and he's in grade two now. So, you know, we have a little bits of homework and all that sort of fun stuff um, yeah. going back and reliving your childhood. But uh, it's, so we like to play Lego and things like that, you know. Um, he's a boy. He's totally obsessed with garbage trucks and sustainability. So we do a lot of stuff projects and things with that yeah. him and I and um, I think one of the great things from my career is that my husband ran as, runs as well and so yeah and he was a track runner uh, in his time and so we get that switch off time on our easy days as well when we're running together yeah uh, he's had to ride the bike a few times recently just because in the block for Berlin just because he had a bit of a sore back but yeah uh, it's been really nice to have that switch off yeah. time and yeah. I have a really good team that I run with as well, Melbourne Uni, um, and, you know, friends when I go up and to our, um, my in-laws place in Ballarat and run with, um, with my girlfriend and just things yeah. like that. I see those yeah. things as my 
easy time where I can just chat and go for a jog and yeah, um, yeah, just enjoy that running time. Like, you know, the reason we run in the first place. Absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. But there's probably a couple of other things I know for others that, you know, may want to um, use a few different ideas. Uh, there's a, a lot of talk these days around, you know, mindset and um, really and affirmations and things like that. And to just kind of give yourself that, that ability to, just kind of switch off from things and really think about what you want to achieve. Um, mm-hmm. So one of the things that I did do in the lead up to Berlin is um, is start to use an affirmation journal from a friend of mine who's um, who's doing some mindset coaching. Um, so yeah, so Janelle Briggs has gave me her diary and we've had a few chats and in the lead up and and I've used her diary to write down some some key affirmations every morning and that was really handy, especially. Yeah. Uh, in the lead up when I landed in Berlin and, you know, you got a bit more downtime in that final week. So it's kind of nice to do that every morning and keep that consistency and just remind yourself, Hey, I'm not, you know, I'm not superwoman. Um, yeah. You know, I do get, you know, I do get worried about things and I do put pressure there will on be women. And... There will be women watching this that will, that will disagree with that. <laughs> so I do get worried. And if it's hailing outside, which has happened here, it's meant to be almost summer for us, but it's been hailing. I don't want to go out and run in the hail just like any other normal person. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, things like that, it's nice to have, um, to be able to write down uh, things about yourself that, yeah. you know, uplift your m- mindset in the morning when you're about ready to start all the things that, yeah. as you said, in the diary that be- can become really yeah. overwhelming. Yeah. So that, and, and, you know, and a race goal where you've been chasing this race goal for like, you know, the last decade yeah. and you're just yeah. so close all the time. Yeah. Um, you know, you've got to remind yourself, Hey, hang on a minute. I've done all this amazing training. Yeah. Um, I really can do this and why not have a go? So that's been one technique that I've introduced just into this Berlin prep that yeah. is nothing to do with running at all, but it's actually helped me in a lot of aspects of my life. Very good. And mm-hmm. I mean, you know, coming back to the job side of things, IBM, to over 200, 230 consultants, or, or, or I think it is that you, you manage, they must be pretty good with you in terms of letting you go to these events. And, and how does that work? Is that, I mean, they, they must be quite understanding or are you doing a lot of digital work or how, how does it, how does that work? Yeah. So I've got a team which is spread out all across Australia and New Zealand uh, and we've got, yeah, look, they're just wonderful <laughs> consultants and, you know, they're all, you know, they're just friends as well. You know, you, yeah. you work in the trenches with uh, people on projects for a long time and over the years and I've been mean, working for 20 plus years now and, you know, you really kind of build that camaraderie just similarly to that on the track, you know, when you're t- training with your team. Um, and so they've been, yeah, just, just amazing at doing you know, everything that they need to do yeah. to look after our clients. And, um, you know, I really enjoy the, the aspect of my lot career that I enjoy is really about helping people build their career journey yeah. and, you know, and, yeah. and showing them, hey, if you do this this way, you know, you're going to get this opportunity and, and really taking them and seeing their career flourish over the years. Yeah. Um, because, you know, having great mentors to, give you ideas and to sort of, you know, give you that encouragement to push yourself a little bit more and Mm. maybe do something you haven't done before um, Mm. and step into the unknown, you know, you really see um, how they reap the rewards and, and really shine and, and obviously um, learn new things that, you know, even I don't know how to do now because I'm, you know, not, I haven't coded a piece of code for a long time. So yeah, uh, yeah, I love doing, seeing that and I love, um, helping people in their career and that's been really fun I guess the, the the thing that I can do obviously with the way technology is now is I can still do work while I'm away if I'm yeah. traveling so I can yeah. have that opportunity um, that you couldn't do back you know 30 yeah. years ago or um, you yeah. needed to be in a physical office so a lot of my work is done that way um, but yeah like we are a team we support each other you know so if I'm away for something um, you know, then I've got the team backing me up. And similarly right now, um, my, you know, uh, my boss is actually about to have a second child and he's having some time with his first child and his wife, you know, before that happens. And so I'm stepping in for him. So like I said earlier, you know, it's about setting those priorities, working with your team and, 
um, you know, going, well, I'm not focused on running right now, but you know, that in the new year I will. So this is my time to do this piece. So, yeah, yeah, so it works really well. Um, But of course it's, it's a team thing, right? Absolutely. I mean, you're, you are a goal getter. Goal getter. You're, you, you can tell that in anything, in any part of your life, I guess, you know, you are, that's what you are. I can see you're just, you know, you've got it. Yeah, you've I, got that determination. And when I don't have a race, I faff around, right? Yeah. So I need to know, I really have to know, like I'm training for this thing and it's on this yeah. date. And then I feel like, okay, now I can plan everything out, you know, and I've had to learn to be a bit flexible with that because you know i don't necessarily control when someone's going to make a decision on uh whether i can run in their race or not so mm-hmm. sometimes you have to and kind of go out of that you like feelings and go okay i think i'm training for this race you know <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely it'll work out. <laughs> does does lachlan i mean you know i mean he's a great athlete in his own right as well your husband i mean what, what's his time for the marathon um it's good isn't it i mean we ran yeah, he's ran two twenty eight in yeah. Frankfurt. Yeah, yeah. unbelievable. So, <laughs> so a real a real running family. But does he does he sense it when you're not training, and you are as you say faffing around and becoming a bit a bit flappy? Does he <laughs> does he get does he is he does it affect him or how does that work? You know, I mean, what does the what does the build up and how do you guys deal with that? Yeah, so I think he's um, probably gets in a similar way where he wants to know what we're doing as well. Um, yeah. yeah, so we we often say, oh, gosh, it'd be nice to just have that locked in and then we'd be able to work that through. But, you know, yeah. we really both kind of worked through this year really well because, you know, so many yeah. things happened this year. I, I struggled to get into a race earlier in the year. Um, okay. And then, yeah, and then um, I ended up signing up to run Gold Coast Marathon at home, which was... Um, really great decision in the end because you know I had a, a great run and um, it was allowed me to focus on the particular races I have wanted to set my sights on uh, and then it it gave me that chance to kind of run my marathon before I ran my my marathon you know because yeah. I ran really well there and lifted the confidence and had that fitness level um, and then I took that into Berlin uh, so I'm really happy with how things worked out even though originally I thought I was prepping for another Commonwealth Games um and so yeah yeah, so I I really did have to kind of change my mindset and and we both did to say well and he was probably the one that really um helped me move on from that you know disappointment of not getting to go to the Commonwealth Games again so you know he said why don't you run Gold Coast and then we'll do this and if you can get into Berlin you know and so it's good to have that um yeah you know that partner to help you with those things and to move through yeah. you know because you know I'd never thought about the fact that I wasn't going to go to the Commonwealth Games you know so yeah so yeah. it was a really good way to um you know especially running a PB of course to finish off the, the year well in a positive yeah. way absolutely and I I just wanted to sort of um I don't want to go too much into the into your actual like the Berlin performance and how you did and obviously it was amazing because I know you've talked at length um, with Matt at Sweaterly on, uh, I think it was episode 82 on his podcast. So if anyone's interested, go go to the Sweaterly podcast and listen to Lisa and Matt chew over all of the details and different things. But, the, <laughs> but I just wanted to sort of give a little highlight to what I loved about that that particular podcast and what I learned. And then we can go into a bit more of the running because I know that we're going to get lots of questions from, from people as well. But um, I thought... The listening to your body um, as you are 43 now, is that right? Yeah, that's right. 43. So listening to your body, which I thought was was really interesting how you talked about that. Um, the three weeks of intense training and then the one week dropping the intensity. I thought that was really interesting as well. And then I think you've touched on it earlier in this chat, but the regular breaks. Um, and I think Matt coined it as like the macro view, which I quite liked um, mm. in the podcast. And they were like my, that was like my three takeaways. But, you know, I, I think that was, that was poignant for me. I thought, yeah, listening to your body as you get older is a real, is a real thing. And, and how, how do you do that for like our people, our listeners? How, how do you improve listening to your body in, in your mind? Yeah, so sadly for me, I did it through experience because as a teenager and 20-year-old, I had way too many stress fractures in my shin. 
and they were biomechanical just because I pronate on my right side. So I was yeah. continually having to get through, you know, that injury uh, roller coaster um, yeah. through my twenties. And I really didn't, it wasn't able to progress really to the level that I thought I could as a junior. Cause I was, I obviously had some running talent, but I'd get injured and then I'd spend half my time pool running and, you know, cycling and things like that and could yeah. never kind of show it on the field. Uh, but what that allowed me to do is to then start to be in tune with um, what were the warning, warning signs. So because I, at the time too, I was um, studying. So I was getting my bachelor degree. Um, I was, uh, working a part-time job to get some money to put away uh, yeah. and I so that I could do things like travel if I you know wanted to race and things like that and and then on top of that I was trying to run and I hadn't really come uh, you know had enough data or in that early stages to understand the patterns of why I was getting sore shins yeah. uh, and so over time I was able to capture that because if you keep a diary and you can sort of set out when you're you know, if you're getting blood tests to check your iron and things like that, then I was able to see a pattern where I get, I just keep trying to train at the intensity all the time. And then I'd get like a cold, um, mm. you know, and get a bit of an illness mm. and, and I'd have a blood test and my iron would start to be dropping. Yeah. And then I'd get a stressy in my shin and I could see this pattern. So I, because I had so many of them, sadly, um, yeah. then I was able to get those warning signs early so I could say oh I'm feeling a bit run down i will got to back off now um, yeah. and then and then pick things up again and then that, that's how yeah. I sort of went hang on a minute I think based on my body type um, you know I need to have three weeks up and then one week down and then I yeah. seem to be able to so while when I fixed my shin problem you know I got some orthotics with a really good podiatrist here um, yeah. and he helped me with the pronation piece and the selection of footwear um, and that all really, you know, helped that biomechanical structure. But in doing that, I then have been able to forge a longer career because I now know, like, when things are not quite right, I might be a little bit run down or I might be a little tight. Um, then I can, you know, back that off and then and then go again. And I seem to then yeah. be able to, um, you know, two days off um, in the scheme of things in a macro plan is mm. nothing compared to having yeah. two months off and Absolutely. having to start again. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's just intelligent running, isn't it? I mean, that is in, that's just intelligent running. I always, I'm always telling myself, I'm trying, trying to always listen to my body. And I found, I actually found it hard because I had a knee, I had knee surgery in December. So I came back and I was like, you know, I, I was like a little kid at Christmas. I just wanted to go and open all the presents. I just wanted to go out and run. <laughs> and, and like, you know, I was so excited. And I, I was silly. I went out and I and I injured myself from not listening to my body. And I thought, yeah, I, I've been off. I'm I'm out of the game. My brain wasn't on it. And now yeah. it's back on that kind of, oh, tweaky knee. Is that a tweaky knee or not? And then it's like yeah. a kilometre later. No, it's not. But it's, you know, you've got to be on it and you've got to really be thinking about, about the body. So I, I'm totally with you on that one. Could you just talk through that one week intensity drop? Is and is that like a 20% off or how do you gauge that? How do you gauge that sort of little drop off for the week? Yeah. Yeah. So with that, you know, I won't necessarily run maximum kilometers for that week. You know, I'll drop that off, you mm. know, 30, you know, if you're doing 180 K, then I'll drop it back to, this sounds a little bit crazy, right? So I totally appreciate that. Um, but it, yeah, does, it does, it does, it does. Yeah, I'm a marathon runner and it does to me. So, yeah. So, yeah. So caveat there, but um, yeah, yeah. insanity, um, you know, I am a bit insane. Uh, so yeah, dropping from 180 down to, you know, that 150, 140, 150 in the month, because I find that when I'm in a marathon block and I'm really fit, I can yeah. run 150 kilometers, no problem. Yeah. Cause a lot of, you know, some of that is relaxing because I'm so fit at that point in time. Uh, but the 180 is where the stretch happens. You know, you've got to do some doubles. You've got to go a bit longer on a Sunday. That's where the risk comes in because yeah. you're going, you know, and so reduce that portion of risk. So whatever that may be for an individual's program, mm -hmm. reduce that. What's that extra bit? Are there a couple of extra runs that you think, oh, do I have to run again? You know, when you're getting to that yeah. point, then yeah. mate, they're the ones to drop off. Um, yeah. And then maybe we'll do two sessions, but I won't like go all out in those sessions. You know, one of them I will, one of you yeah. know, because you don't want to drop everything, but yeah. one of them I will, and maybe I'll do some efforts in my long run rather than doing, you know, the extra sessions. So things like that um, help yeah. you drop 
the miles and then yeah. drop that. If, even if it's just dropping the expectation on yourself, yeah. you know, because if you want to achieve in all aspects of your life, you constantly feel like you're trying to measure up to your own expectations. Yeah. And really, they're not anyone else's. I mean, they're just your own. And as we often say, Locke often says, you know, you run a marathon and it's all great news for that day, but there's another marathon next week and everyone's focused on that, right? So who cares about the 224 at Berlin? You know, yeah. only we do, right? Yeah. So um, we, we create our own expectations. So it's I'm like... Becoming the and... fastest Australian of all time. You know, I mean, that's just... <laughs> Someone else will do it the next week, right? <laughs> so, yeah, so... I think we're our own worst enemy half the time. So and it's good to have other people to yeah. kind of like ground you and yeah, yeah. and you know yeah I, setting different. I agree with that. I, I found I found um, when I started marathon training, I could really feel the stress because obviously there's a lot of people that are going to be watching this that have not run a marathon yet or they're training for their first marathon. And I found that the stresses of coming up because a lot of people go into marathons from from maybe a different sport or they haven't done, they haven't come from a running background. And I actually found that the long runs, I, I, I could feel that stress. And as a personal trainer, I, I understood it. And I thought, Hmm, I'm not sure that's good for me to push through that. So what I did is I, I did the long runs, but then I did the last section on a cross trainer to just take, right, the, yeah. just take the stress out. So I was yeah. still getting the cardiovascular workout, but I would do a long run and say it needed to be 18 miles. I'd do 14 mile run, run, finish the gym. And then I'd do the equivalent time and a little bit more because you're not quite getting the same bang for your buck when you're on a cross trainer as you would on those last four miles. And I found yeah. that helped me just make that adaptation as I started to go. And then as I moved up, I could, I could just go out to just full out running. But that was, yeah, that was one thing mm. I that one thing I did. Yeah, that, that's really good. Yeah. That, and, that you know, me. mental the game as well, because then you've gone from being outside and the looking at things and yeah. experiencing out the outdoors to stuck yeah. inside going, oh, how long have I got to go? You know, it, so and, maybe and a good mental piece, right? It is. It really is, out. isn't it? I find, I do find mm. that treadmill running is, is mentally, is, is difficult and you're playing constant games with yourself to like, right, got to get through this bit and, you know. And it and it doesn't seem to get much easier. It doesn't like every time you do it. Um, but okay, I'm going to put. I know we said we wouldn't talk too much of just running and training and whatever. And I think we've really covered off a lot of the kind of work, the work life family balance. I think that was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. But I I've got a couple of questions that I wanted to ask, which was best two marathon sessions if you had to pick if you had to say that move that move the needle what's your best two yeah so i think uh the traditional run of um 5k efforts within a longer run is kind of yeah. what everyone goes to but yeah. i kind of like doing uh the 3k efforts because i find okay. that i can then hold the pace a bit longer and do more of the more of the efforts hold the pace that i want a bit longer with a little less yeah. stress um, right. So I think that probably, you know, building up your 3K efforts within a longer run uh, yeah. is is my favourite uh, okay. because, yeah, when do you start doing like the 8K reps within a longer run, then obviously you start dreading those sessions. So I wouldn't say that, you know, those ones are my favourite yeah. or, or yeah. really uh, give me any indicators. But if I can hold that, you know, that um, half marathon pace even, uh, yeah. then I feel like I'm ready to go. Uh, okay. And I've been building up that. Um, those types of sessions so because I came from such an injury prone background yeah. I tend I've tended over the years to be more cautious um, in each of my marathon blocks and probably haven't done as much of the longer marathon sessions as as you know my competitors have and so I think that showed a little bit in Berlin because I did a lot more of it in um, in this year and in both blocks Right. So I'm hoping to build a bit more on that now that I feel yeah. like I'm a bit more, uh, a bit stronger and don't seem to have any problems um, from the past. So that's okay. one piece. Um, I think the other thing, this might be a bit surprising, but we do a lot of um, five by a mile sessions at 10K pace um, or, okay. um, or four by 2K um, or some combinations of 3K, 2K and miles on the track. Um, and that, is really important for your marathon because obviously if you can't uh, hold, you know, that sub threshold pace, 
then you're not going to run the time, right? So you need to yeah. keep your 10K, you know, it's just basic maths. You need to keep your 10K fitness pretty well, not at the maximum 10K speed, but at the 10K feel. You need to be running um, at least one session a week doing that so that you're yeah. ready for surges, you know, you're ready for that that down bit in the marathon because everyone yeah. goes through at least once, maybe multiple times in the marathon yeah. where you kind of got to go, Oh gosh, I've got to go again, you know? Yeah. Um, and I've still got 17 kilometers to go, you know? So yeah. you need yeah. to be able to run at that intensity during the week as well. And yeah, five by miles are really good 10K session. So yeah, that, probably those two. And on the three Ks, so just on the three Ks, how many of those do you put into a long run? Yeah, so five by three K? Five. Is, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I, I think they might, some of the groups might do a few more. Um, yeah. But I guess that takes, you know, that takes build up and, yeah. you know, everyone needs to start at the level. If they, if you've never done it before, then you don't go straight yeah. to five by three K, you know, you do two yeah. by three K and, and yeah. then, you know, build from there. Yeah. The advice. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, look, I'm going to open it up to some questions from anyone mm. that is watching. Um, but in the meantime, I, I imagine uh Lachlan's now gone off to school and do the school run right has he already left he has yeah he has yeah. Oh, we'll get him on we'll get him on another yeah, time I'd say like so, given the we'll time. get him on another yeah, time absolutely. yeah yeah how to be <laughs> a husband of an fun. elite athlete yeah 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah he's uh he's meeting uh one of the other dads and they're walking to school um one of the girls in Pete's class it's her birthday yeah. today so yeah Sweet, my sweet boy has drawn her a picture, a happy birthday picture with a corgi on it, actually, because he did it yeah. just with corgis. Yeah. So yeah. they're uh, walking together to school. <laughs> very good. Very good. Very good. Um, right. Let me see if we've got any questions. Not yet. Uh, oh, yes, we do. Um, colds, flus, mm -hmm. when they strike you in your block, how do you overcome them? Well, first of all, like everybody, you get frustrated because you <laughs> you're interrupted. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. But look, um, if it's a sore throat, then usually it's a viral thing. So the best advice I've been given is to um, is to stop. No, you know, no mm. running. I'm not allowed to run uh, when I've got a sore throat because yep. you don't want to end up with chronic fatigue um, and, you know, everything be thrown, you know, into the wind. So and mm. all that training that you've already done. So certainly, you know, you don't want to be running with a sore throat at all. But once that goes and you've got energy back, then it's like jogging. Um, keeping warm if it's winter, you want to keep warm. Obviously, if it's summer, you're warm anyway when you go for your jogs. Um, mm -hmm. And then as you start to come out of that, then, you know, you can add some light sessions into the mix. But certainly yeah. you wouldn't go into straight intensity straight up. So, you know, with a cold, you're usually looking at, you know, well, probably four days off. Um, what's called mm. a flu if it's a really bad flu then obviously you you know you need to take a longer time uh and i'm i at the moment to my knowledge haven't had covid yet but it seems to be uh coming back again in with a vengeance by the sound yeah. of it around the world so i think my um, reign of not having covid might be might end up being over soon uh so i i yeah. haven't had i can't give anyone any experience on that one but certainly very similar you know, you don't want to be pushing yourself with a sore throat and, and we know COVID's viral. So, uh, yeah, you want to be in it for the long haul. Sure. So don't, uh, don't run while in, at high intensities while you're got battling that. Good stuff. Throw everything into battling that, that one, I think. That certainly <laughs> yeah. answers the question, I think. And so I've got another question. How many double days would you, uh, would you do in a typical week uh, in a marathon training block? Yeah, three would Great. usually be okay. yeah 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 so mondays fridays and saturdays would in my program is okay. usually the the way are you, are you but we one... kind of do a switch as well so like one week we might do three sessions and an easy and just a comfortable long run uh longer yeah. but just comfortable and then the next week we might do two sessions and then make the long run the session the third session so sure. you know it, it also depends on which week we're doing those things yeah mm -hmm. Okay. Um, do you have any deload weeks in your periodization? Yeah. So it either coincides with a race. So we'll taper down a little for a race, not a huge amount, unless it's the other peak race, because you might put in a 10K and, and a half marathon and things like that in the mix. Uh, or I'll 
we will program it as per the discussion earlier and on Matt's podcast where we do um, three weeks of more intense work and then we kind of pull it down and, and really deload in the, the, in the fourth week. Cool. Brilliant. And so what is the ultimate goal for Lisa Waitman? I mean, what is marathon tick completed, done, you know, game over? Oh, I feel like it's, it's, yeah. it's what, what is that? Is that fastest Australian? Is it top 10 at the Olympics? What, you know, what's, what yeah, is it? Yeah, I think records are, you know, I don't like to focus on, you know, the fastest Australian or things like that because, yeah, you know, records are made to be broken. You want them to yeah, be yeah. broken because that's the fun part of the sport, right? So, you're not, you know, I don't think that even if I was to run and, and, you know, beat Benita's record, I think that, you know, someone else will do it eventually. And so, yeah, um, th- yeah I'm not so focused on that. It's more about the experience and the, the times myself. So, yeah. my, like I said earlier, my goal has been always to run a 223 something, yeah. um, you know, and so, and, and hopefully, you know, a little bit or, or equal to, to Lisa. Um, yeah. And I feel like that's been my goal from a young age. But yeah. I'm, you know, at 43, I never thought I'd be running these times. You know, I ran a 10K in 31.20 this year, you know, and it blew my mind. Like I knew how fit I was with, because I'd been focused on my 10K speed um, yeah. through the first part of the year, because that is how I yeah. thought I could get selected for common games because I couldn't get into the marathon. Um, and so... I, I just, you know, I was really excited about that 10K speed and thought, wow, I could actually, you know, run some more PBs over the shorter distances as well. Um, so that excites me too. Uh, I, I really just want to keep, um, you know, building off, uh, you know, the fitness that I've got because you just don't know when, you know, when it might be time to go, I'm yeah. not going to run competitively anymore. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so to just keep um, having a go at just shaving more time off my marathon Um, and also like just just not worrying about blowing up in the marathon you know when you I've been through so many marathons and all different things have happened you know like if I take Chicago in 2019 I was in the same 10k shape and you know my marathon training had been really good not as good as Berlin but it'd been really good and I thought I could run a PB there I was like convinced this is going to be my my race yeah Uh, and I got food poisoning so yeah. I was in a lot of trouble in the last 12K of this Chicago marathon. It was meant to be my fairy tale race, right? Um, and, you know, you can do everything right, but something – and I ate all yeah. the plain foods and ate at the hotel and did all these things, and um, I couldn't fault anything I did in the lead-up, and yet I still had some bad luck. So, you know, you just never know what's going to happen. So I'm at nah. the stage now in my career where I just want to go – you know what, I'm just going to give stuff a go and I might run a yeah. bit faster at the first half. Well, you know, okay, yeah. I slowed a little bit down in the second half. So, yeah. you know, it wasn't a big deal, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's where I'm at now. I just want to give things a try and not be not be scared about blowing up yeah. or not hitting, reaching my goal and, yeah. yeah, just enjoy it, I think. Seems like you're in a perfect place, actually, where you're you're at the almost like the peak of your powers, but you're almost, not that you don't care, but you don't... It, it it doesn't mean as much anymore because you've got a bigger picture as well, you know, because you've got such a rounded life. It's not like you're just on athletics and that's it. And it's just that one thing and every, everything hinges on that, you know, that's a, ra- right. a yeah. race doesn't go your way. You're going to go and play Lego with Pete and that's going to be fun. That's so right. it's like, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, I can see that in, in your mannerisms and how it is. So, yeah. And I think that almost helps the performance because because you don't have that single pressure you're that's like, right well, and then you relax and then you perform better yeah yeah, yeah so nice we talk about that. it a bit Locke and I and then mm. you know yes as hard as it's been to always be told you're not good enough and you're not running fast enough and all these things to get into these big races or to you know to you know, make a team, for example, or to get some funding from our governing body, you know, yeah. continually year after year, you get told and you think you're like, well, if I just do this, then maybe I'll get to that level, you know, and I keep doing better each year and I still can't, and I still keep getting told, no, you can't right? So after a while you go, why am I listening to this stuff? You know, like, it doesn't <laughs> really matter. I yeah. can go and run 12K 
this marathon to have a great time and you know mm. and it doesn't matter all the other stuff you know yeah. so after a, a period of time now because I'm older and you know I've really been able to go to really look at that and step back from that and go well that's just all noise and there's no no value in focusing on it and I think yeah. we've in the end been fortunate that you know I didn't start my career as a and try to be a full-time athlete and struggle through the years yeah. Um, you know, I'm kind of doing my 20 year old running life yeah. now, even though I'm working, but you know, I've got an established career, um, things mm. are all set up, you know, I'm settled in my home and I've got a loving family and, um, you know, I'm not trying to, um, make, you know, I'm not struggling to work out where I'm going to get my next paycheck from out of what race, you know, things like yeah. that. I can really treat running as my passion and hobby. Yeah. Um, yeah. you know, and so I kind of feel quite thankful for that, you know, even though it's been really hard and I never yeah. really will know whether being a full-time athlete would have helped me, um, run faster earlier. Um, yeah. but I'm in a good place now and maybe I can, you know, I can find those, um, Absolutely. those improvements in training now. Yeah. yeah. I, I love your mindset. We'll I think it's inspiring. <laughs> yeah, no, I think that that's inspiring to me. I mean, I'm just a little bit younger than you, but it, that's quite inspiring, you know, that you're getting faster as you get older. I think that should inspire lots of people because, you know, that's not the norm. <laughs> you know, and, and, and you're bucking the trend and you're giving us all hope. So I thank you for that, Lisa Waitman. <laughs> My pleasure. Um, so, yeah, I mean, look, we... We've overrun. I'm just going to ask anyone if they've got any final questions in this last minute. But um, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting this evening. I know it's uh, early morning for you, but um, and a little bit later than we normally do here on on the team Runderwear Instagram Live. But um, I'm sure we'll talk again when um, you know what your next races are and and follow the journey because I think it's super inspiring. Um, it is for me anyway, hearing your story. Um, I certainly probably will message you and say, what do you think about this, Lisa? You know, <laughs> yeah, I, I, for sure. I, I'm a bit unsure on this. What would you do? <laughs> um, so I will definitely be doing that on WhatsApp uh, for sure. And um, I just want to say thank you so much for joining us. And check out, um, do check out the podcast on Sweat Elite if you want to hear more on Lisa's in a little bit more detail really into your training and how the whole block came through for Berlin as well and how, how that success was brought about. Um, that'd be, that's, that's brilliant. Thank you so Has much. Any questions that we've missed yeah. out on then? Yeah. Uh, oh, we've got one more. On Hang on. Instagram. How many track sessions were you doing a week for your fastest 10 K from Danielle? Yeah, Danielle. So just one. Uh, and then the other one on a path, bike path. Wow. Okay. Very good. Very good. Yeah. And what, what, what kind of, um, oh, here you go. We've got another one. What are your go-to gels? Yeah. So I use 32 GI. Uh, so it's a company that my, one of my very close friends um, is a distributor for here in Australia. Uh, yeah. And yeah, it's based out of South Africa, I believe. Uh, okay. So I've been using that just um, in the last few years, actually, just uh, from, well, 2020, just the start of 2020. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And largely um, uh, in 2019, when I was uh, not feeling too well in Chicago, um, I really wanted to change because, um, you know, I just had a bad experience, not because of the fueling, but, you know, the afterthought of having the same fueling program after I'd experienced that, I was like, I need something new. Uh, and so, yeah, so I um, moved over to 32GI and uh, that's been really good for training and, and racing. But I'm lucky my coach is a physiologist, so I have that extra bit of support uh, in diet and, and uh, fueling programs. So I don't yeah. have to think too much about it. Uh, he does all okay. of that. Yeah. Very good, very good. Um, Danielle came back in and she wanted to know how many miles you do in your 10K. How many miles a week do you do in your 10K training block? Yeah, 100 miles. 100 miles. Okay, 100 miles. Yeah. Um, and then Kevin was asking, uh, strength training, how many <laughs> sessions per week? Um, I think yeah. I know the answer. I think I know the answer yeah. to this, but I will let you, I will let you, uh, let you say. We had a chat about that on that podcast. Um, yeah, so zero. <laughs> um, we did laugh about how, uh, a lot of tra strength training was picking Pete up for a while, but now he's, uh, he's up 
almost up to my uh, shoulders. So I can't pick him up anymore. So my yeah. training really does need to change to like the real stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Get one it's in a everything. time thing. Yeah. My issue is time, you know, how yeah. many things do you, can you really shove into the week? Um, and that falls yeah. down, but you know, that's not to say that others should necessarily follow that plan. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, actually I did have mm -hmm. another one question. So do you actually work on your running technique? Not so much. Um, you know, we do drills and things like that before we run some fast training sessions. Uh, so, you know, that type of thing. Um, back when I was injured all the time, I did a lot of um, pool running and a lot of core work. So I feel okay. like a couple of the boys actually that I trained with, you know, said to me, you don't do any strength, but you've got strong core. Like when I see you run, you seem to have a strong core. And it's like, I don't know whether I've just built that up, you know, through all of my years of being injured and spending more time in the pool and things like that. Um, and then it's kind of there. And then with the, the regular um, train, I guess more the, I don't do any big jumps in intensity in my training weeks. Yeah. So I think that helps because you're not then running, you know, where you're dropping your hips and things like that. If you, if you're running a program, throughout the year where you're only just increasing slightly uh, mm. week on week, then I think that helps with, um, you know, injury prevention as well. Um, yeah. So then, you know, if you've got that kind of base level fitness in your uh, base level strength in your core, mm. only load quite uh, carefully through the mm. weeks in your program, then that's yep. the way to stay injury free. Fantastic. Brilliant. Mm. I think that's covered off all of the questions um do we have any last minutes let's see if we have any uh any last minutes but if not that was absolutely brilliant thank you so much i've really enjoyed this lisa um my pleasure thank absolutely you. brilliant and we'll uh, we'll chat again and hopefully you come to london and yeah. i can we can <laughs> go for a little shake out run before london marathon that'd be great show you that around. would be lovely yeah you never, <laughs> you never know ron ron may even join us who that's knows? right get the band together hey get the band together get the band together that's it <laughs> lovely well Brilliant. thanks for listening everyone and oh. yeah have a great evening or in the absolutely morning. yeah <laughs> thank you very much inspirational and brilliant and we'd love to have you back on at some other other point in time in the future that'd be great Jamie, talk to you later bye talk to you later thanks bye